the pictures that I'm going to show you now are some location scouting that we did for our pre-shoot that you're going to be seeing in the That's next right. like hour. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I think always when we look at locations, we always pay attention to specific details. Um, it's not just about how beautiful it is, because sometimes, as you know, if it's something beautiful in real life, it doesn't mm. translate to a photograph. Yeah, and actually that was a challenge on this one. You know sometimes like when you have too many options, like too many shoes, and you don't know which one to go for? I don't know about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I have you done. For you, it's too many dongles. Like, yeah, okay. ap apple. They were talking about apple here, <laughs> not anything else. <laughs> Um, that's how I felt for this pre-shoot. So you guys know that I don't really need a lot to make a good photo, and I really love that challenge. Um, this was like being in a candy factory, or like a chocolate shop, and you could have everything you wanted. I w it was too much, it was too much, but it was good as well. It was a good lesson in being really analytical about what I was looking for, and um, keeping in mind my vision. So we had a look at all these locations and there was more, imagine just like a field of flowers. So I had colors in mind and that's the thing that I was kind of, that was rooting me to my vision, colors. So I had two options for the location pre-shoot uh, scene that I wanted to create for you. The first was with this dress, which is a, I don't know, a unicorn mermaid colored dress. <laughs> We were arguing about if it was more of a unicorn or more of a mermaid. Even though she's wearing yeah. wings here, right? right? Yeah, it's like a unicorn mermaid. Um, so I had the colors of this dress in mind in case I saw colors on location that connected me to this dress and I could see that working together. So when I was at the lake, I could see that there was a similarity in the colors there, but it wasn't going to work logistically because I don't think I could put the model in the lake. <laughs> I mean, maybe back at home, but not, not here. Not safely, yeah. Not safely You're gonna here. Get um, so yeah, but I was thinking about that, and this was my favorite location for this dress. That I was like, guys, I'm sure we'll make it work. Like, you know, have it sitting, the water in the background, it could work. But also, another thing to consider is you have to pay attention to details in terms of how specular the dress is versus the scene. Because yeah. sometimes when you look at a scene, it's really matte and there's a lot of overcast, but maybe the, the detail in the dress is overpowering. It doesn't match. Yeah. Yeah, so this dress is actually by a friend of mine out in California, um, Fire Five Pass. She's really talented, and we're going to see it later today. But the one, this is what I wanted to show you. So this is a dress by Joe Fleming, and I had this in mind when we were location scouting too, because I had two options, either the unicorn dress or this fiery red one. And the moment I saw this bush, okay, you can imagine the passion. I was very excited. <laughs> I kid you not, sometimes we drive down the road, and this is in England usually, there's always a small little bush hidden away in the, like a, you know, on the street. And she's like, did you see that bush? I was like, what bush? And she's, she's absolutely obsessed. She lives this 24-7. Yeah, you do. You have to yeah. get obsessed. I think so. Right. I don't notice cars. And he's like, oh, did you see that Ferrari? Yeah, what? but that's more obvious, you know? <laughs> really yeah. not. like, it's just another car. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so when the moment I saw this, I got excited because I could see them working together. Mm -hmm. um, the colors of the dress, the shape of the flowers, the colors of the flowers, and I wasn't just looking at that. I was looking at the time of day. What time of day were we looking? Um, where would the sun be? I noticed that this was in the shade, and the sun was actually uh, coming behind. And that would be the time that we were going to shoot as well. So I was keeping in mind the time of day, location, um, uh, the location being that this was actually very close to the bathroom, so amenities. <laughs> very important. <laughs> it is really important. Yeah, Otherwise really you'll important. Otherwise, you go in the bushes. Yes. Um, for me as well, whenever I'm location scouting, because it usually is a very small team, very intimate shoot, me the model, maybe a makeup and hair artist, being close to the car helps as well so that you can just haul things to and from easily. Um, but the key thing as well was really the light. Where was the sun going to be? Because we were going to be using natural light. And so the sun started out above her over here. And that meant that when her face was turned, if I, if, if I put a girl in there, the, her face was turned this way, then the light would hit her beautifully. Um, I was hoping that the sun wouldn't go behind her. But I brought along a reflector just in case it did, because I knew I'd have an assistant. Don't rely on that, right? I knew I had an assistant who could bounce that light back. What's the... Do you always have an assistant with you on set? That's a no. big thing. 
No, I should. Yeah. <laughs> It'd make my life so much easier. I think we all need assistance. So it really goes to show that even though, you know, we do have that luxury, it's not really necessary all the time to have no. it. No, but that's when you're, that's why you pay attention. Because mm -hmm. if I really wanted to shoot within that scene and I didn't have an assistant, I would just got there earlier and made sure I caught it when the sun was where I wanted it to be. Rather than it, wait. Does the position of sun matter if it's overcast versus like daylight? I mean. Yes, because even when it's overcast, the light still is pretty directional, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I still feel a difference. So I'm quite sensitive to it. So I really do feel a difference, even if it's overcast. Even though it's diffused, so the majority of the light is coming from a direction. Mm -hmm. So you do notice it. Um, as well as the thing, okay, another thing I noticed about this, which you will see when we are going through the location video, was the fact that she could slip into it easily. We are shooting in a park, so it is an arboretum, and you have to be really respectful of the plants there. I can't get in there with my garden <laughs> shears and chop things up and tidy it up. Um, so, yeah, she, we could part it, she could get in, and I could, I could feel it. They say your gut feeling, and gut is your second brain, Honestly, it's true. My gut was telling me this was going to work and I was just going to go with it. I was going to make it work because I was being very stubborn. So have a plan, but stay open to creative collaboration. Um, this is like things like when you're pulling a team together and stuff like that, because you might think that you got it all, you got it all down. But be very open to evolving as well as an artist um, and working with other people. So things to consider as well. Um, Vision, how would you communicate your idea to a model or team, as well as the logistics, which I covered earlier, which is location, light, equipment, um, how much are you carrying, stuff like that. And then have a plan B in case, you know, plan A, plan A fails, in case it rained. So that was something that we actually We had to consider beforehand. Consider. We had umbrellas, we had scrims, we made yes. sure that we had tarps as well in case the ground gets dirty or yes. wet or muddy, you can still shoot because half the time when you look at your photos, Sometimes they're not, you're not showing the feet anyway. Yeah. So you can, you can get away with having coverage on the floor and everything like that. Yeah. And just, I guess, being aware of rain. Because <laughs> the number of times I've actually sh like, stuck with the shoe and shot in the rain. Oh my God. And you don't look as glamorous all the time when you're shooting because you have rain boots as well. Yeah. Your wellies, we're, as you call it. We're photographers. <laughs> we're not, we, we're not, we don't have yeah. to be glamorous. Mm -hmm. Except, you know, when you're giving in front of right. a show. So. Things that helped, visualizing the shoot. So this is where my gut feeling came from. I could see it. I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, how it was going to come together, but I could see it, I could feel it. Um, consider what is necessary for your final image. Mm -hmm. Color toning, quality of light. And again, the reds. I was thinking about colors right from the very beginning. So the red of the flowers, the red of the dress, how would that be too much red? What, what other color could I add in there to break that up and make that work better as a picture? And I, and I just think about it. You just let it cook, cook away like behind the scenes. But also don't forget, aside from just color, it relates to the balance of how dark to light the image is. Yes. Because if you have an, air, uh, an image that's predominantly shadows, which I think a lot of your work is a lot of mid-tones and shadows, color gets to play a lot more freely within that photo when you're color toning. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you see an image that's beautifully color toned, pay attention to how much detail there is in the shadows and highlights. And if it's predominantly highlights, predominantly shadows. Yeah, that's really a good point. Yeah, yeah. true. Remind yourself to not be afraid of failing, honey. I, I don't. <laughs> I fail all the time. That's my life. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Except with you, though. I succeeded there. I don't know how. <laughs> Mystery to all of us. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid of failing because how are you going to grow? Honestly, like there are so many shoots that I've had, those pictures won't see the light of day. I've actually had to message the model and the team and be like, I'm really sorry, it didn't work out. And I had to do that because I wasn't happy. I wasn't feeling it on the day. I wasn't feeling it with the location. And that's okay. I learned a lesson. I learned to be stronger for my next shoot. But there's one thing though. Yeah. How do you know when you failed? Oh, that's interesting. I guess with the final photo for me, yeah. if the final photo doesn't come together, sometimes I know I failed before that though, mm -hmm. when I've walked away mm -hmm. and I haven't walked away with something that I felt was good. And I'm a very feeling person. You are, yeah, we know. <laughs> but there's, <laughs> there's also a balance though, because I feel like sometimes when you put work out there, you're not 100% sure of. Yeah. Sometimes you're surprised how people react. Yes, And there's that's a balance true. of being able to know when to let go versus when to feel like you're overbearing yourself. Because yeah. as artists, we always suffocate our own self before our pictures are out there. 
and these flowers don't blossom, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's, it's just started, believe me. I'm going easy. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Apologies. Um, yeah, but actually, you know what? You've actually just raised a really good point, which is having another pair of eyes. Mm -hmm. So how many of you guys show your work to somebody else before you share it online? You can raise your hand. Who shows it to other people? Yeah? And then you guys don't. You, you, you keep it to yourself and then share it? Yeah, so I would honestly say show it to somebody. So see what somebody else says first. Um, I used to do, before I had you, I had my best friend Martha and my friend John. And I would show them the pictures and I'd be like, hey, what do you think? Because those two were very honest with me. If they didn't like it, they would just be like, I don't know, Bella. And they'd be like, okay, that's fine. I, I, that's what I want to know. Um, and that's another thing. Make sure they're honest and they're not just yes people. Right. So, and be open to what they say. They can be like, oh, I didn't really like that. And you can be like, you don't need to take it personally. You can be like, so tell me why. Why didn't you like that? You say that to me now. Right. But it's yeah. also good to, sometimes we put pictures out there and ask the audience and ask yeah. your fans, what do you think? What would you have this changed differently? This one or this one? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you get yeah. a lot of feedback that way. Never be scared of that. Yeah. So sometimes even uh, before I edit, um, what would we do? We'd share like a, like a couple of selects if I'm struggling with a select to pick. I'd be like, guys, these two pictures are really good, but I don't know which one's stronger. Which one do you like? Exactly. And so the audience will tell me, and that's okay too. It's just a really fun way as well to engage with your audience. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do that on Instagram as well, yes. really easily in the stories. And you know, people are never scared to give their opinions <laughs> online. <laughs> so as we know, as use them, you know, yeah. it's great. Yeah. So when it comes to making props, a few things that really helped me were craft blogs and videos. Um, because it's just really fun as well, and you can learn everything on the internet. So, like you're here, so well done you. But um, <laughs> yeah, seriously, right? You can learn everything on the internet. Inspiration from film, Tim Burton, like Guillermo del Toro, Tim Walker, all of these guys are my absolute heroes. They're color toning. Color toning is a passion, clearly, and those color tones that they have, unique to themselves, are very evocative and inspiring to me. Um, don't be afraid to start or make mistakes, and this is something that you can fix in post-production. So in the case of me talking about that cape, mm -hmm. the cape wasn't perfect. It was far from it. But in post-production, I knew that I had enough knowledge to tidy it up, to build it up, and if it didn't work out, no harm, no foul.